Hi, everyone. I'm Kel Santiago Pilarski, and I grew up with a family of artists. Um, just like what Taco told you a while ago, um, uh, my parents, uh, for example, they're painters. Like my dad is a comic artist in my country, and my brothers are... Uh, painters and sculptors, and my sister brings life to, to chocolates by making them into a, a life-size uh, sculpt, sculptures. It's, it looks too good to eat, I, I guess. So I grew up in something that is um, partly a home and also partly an art gallery because I, I grew up with my, my parents who are artists as well. Um, I grew up with all of that, but I, I was not able to grow up with the computer. So I am very honored to be standing here in front of you at WordCamp Europe, in front of developers and, and awesome programmers like you guys. Um, so that's it. So let's uh, start the story. So the year was uh, 2008, and uh, the Backstreet Boys were still big at, at that time. And that was also the same year that I uh, became a nurse. And I was uh, working at a hospital for five years. And afterwards, like I mentioned a while ago, my, my family's art influence to me was, was so great that by 2009, a year later, uh, I was looking for something else to do. So I started tattooing. And a lot of people ask me, so what is it like to work as a nurse and a tattoo artist? Well, I would say that working as a nurse and a tattoo artist at the same time feels like at the opposite sides of a magnet. It just, you, you don't know uh, what, which, what starts, where does it end. And um, in 2014, I, I had a chance to uh, switch careers. So. I got insane probably at that time, and I bought a one-way ticket to Japan, and uh, that's where our adventure <laughs> begins. So who here has been to a country uh, where English is not the native language? Any, any, anyone here in the room? All right, a lot of people. So if you have been in a country where English is not the native language, and uh, you cannot speak the local language, then you know you're in for a real adventure. Like, for example, looking at all of these neon lights, uh, very Tokyo, Japanese-style uh, um, uh, advertisement, you can get lost a lot, right? And you will also find your, yourself in a situation where um, something as simple as a washing machine or a toilet could be a very intimidating device because everything is in the language that you don't speak. Um, and finally, uh, I'm, I'm sure some of you have experienced the same thing. Uh, when you can't speak the language, when you open a menu in a restaurant, you would just point, 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 oh, I want this, I want that, and you end up eating that mysterious food. So uh, it's always a default in a great adventure, but just like any other story, when there's a mishap, there's also success. So uh, I have been living in Japan for the past few years, and it's been a great journey. And I joined Digital Cube as the writer and evangelist. And uh, we're a company who's, that's based in Japan. We started in 2006. We're Amazon Web Services advanced consulting partner. And we're also a, prof a team of professionals who are uh, dedicated to contributing to WordPress. That is why today I wanted to uh, share with you the benefits that we saw as a team and as a, as a company together uh, uh, on the benefits on uh, your profession, uh, your business, and the community. Like you can see here, uh, our talk will highlight different contribution groups and how you can take part in them. You can see here core plugins, accessibility, team, uh, training, support, and, and so on. So the big question you might have is, do I have what it takes to be to WordPress, the largest CMS in the world? Uh, or you might think, oh, I'm not a developer, and I, I, I don't touch code, I, I don't do that thing. Well, I would say that there is something for everybody, and each one of us can benefit in our own uh, contributions. So let's begin with something, uh, with the core contribution. Uh, if you go to makewordpress.org, you can see something like tickets that are marked as good first bugs. This is something good for new contributors. And you can also do something like patch testing. If you're uh, really interested in uh, contributing to Core, you can go to Make WordPress Core, and you can see there the, the schedule uh, of the, the weekly chat meetings. 
So why should we contribute to core? Uh, I think it's really beneficial to know that uh, if you contribute to the core, you're able to know the uh, WordPress coding standards and the, the processes. Plus, it's also a, a great feeling to know that you've contributed to, uh, to, to WordPress, which is one of the largest uh, CMS uh, out there right now. And of course, uh, seeing your name on the contributor list, it, it's a great motivation. And we all need motivation to move forward. Another are contribution are plugins. And what it, plugins are a very uh, useful tool to help extend the functionality of WordPress. And these plugins are created by WordPress users all over the world. Like right now, we have over 44,000 WordPress plugins out there. Uh, in, the, in the WordPress repository. So my, my colleague, my good friend, Takayuki Miyoshi, he's right here at WordCamp Europe. You could just find him, talk to him later. Um, I, I talked to him the other day, and I asked him, uh, why, why should we contribute to WordPress? And he said, we should contribute to WordPress plugins because we learn from one of the most important things, which is feedback. And feedback has a huge role in, in developers' growth and, and learning. So developers can learn from each other codes. And the more good codes are out there available, the, the better our developers become. So uh, next up, there would be a video interview done by Takayuki, the, the uh, creator of Contact Form 7. He will tell us uh, his own opinion on, on why we should contribute to WordPress. Can you hear it? Um, it's, uh, he's speaking basically in Japanese, and uh, we did a subtitle. So I think that would work. Okay. That's all right. It's okay. Mm -hmm. So there are also other ways of getting involved. So besides besides writing plugins, we can also join the plugin review team. So last year, when I met uh, Mika Epstein at a Q&A session she did at WordCamp Tokyo, uh, she said that there are about 30 plugins submissions per day. And each plugin review takes about 5 to 10 minutes. So the review team is there to read all the codes and make sure there are no errors. After all, security uh, is the top priority. So also related to uh, plugin contributions are uh, something like this. I'm not sure if you've heard of this before. It's called Adendio, which is a uh, free and open to all search engine for plugins. It's authored by my good friend Luca Fercasi. He's in the room right now. Uh, you can talk to him later about this. Um, so it's a Chrome extension. If you install it, uh, it and go to the plugin directory in WordPress, you would see something like this. Uh, you can choose something like, for example, what plugins are already translated in Japanese, Turkish, and, and so on, or what plugins are, uh, have four or five stars. So it's, a, it's also a very helpful tool. Uh, this is a continuation of Miyoshi's uh, video a while ago. It said, writing code isn't the only way to contribute to plugins. You can support users on forums. 
and you can translate plugins into your language. You can make UI suggest suggestions from your design knowledge. And there are a lot of things to do, so let's join and have fun. That's it. Another contribution we can do our WordPress environment. So there are a lot of talented developers and other professions, uh, professionals who are uh, building their own uh, WordPress environments. So WordPress has a lot of users and has a lot of developers. And by creating free and open source environments, we help users discover a variety of tools that works for them and their projects. So one example here is called VCCW. It's created by my colleague. He's right here in the room as well. Um, it is a vagrant-based WordPress environment. And yeah, <laughs> another one is Walker, which is also awesome. This is a local WordPress de uh, development environment that is based on Docker. So uh, it only takes about three or five seconds, and you get a new uh, WordPress install. And finally, is Amimoto, which is a WordPress and WooCommerce cloud environment on Amazon Web Services. Next up are training. Uh, books and education. Uh, recently, we see WordPress in higher education. Like, uh, for example, my husband here used to um, teach a, at a university ab to students on how to create WordPress-based websites. And now, more and more uh, people are doing that, and we can see it in classrooms, uh, in, in kids' workshops, and also uh, university. So getting involved in uh, training and education, uh, what you can do is you can create le lesson plans, and you can test uh, the accuracy uh, with current WordPress. If you're really serious about getting involved in training and education, you can go to uh, makewordpress.org slash training, and there you can see the, uh, the weekly chat schedule. What kinds of contributions are already out there? Like, for example, probably some of you have heard about WordSesh, which is a free uh, full day of uh, live streaming of everything about WordPress. Um, these are presentations from all over the world. So uh, another was uh, in WordCamp US 2015, Matt said, we should learn JavaScript. Deeply. So, one of our good friends, Zach Gordon, created um, something like a JavaScript master course, masteral course. I'm sorry. Um, so, that, that, this is a good approach to that. Another example is uh, WPCampus.org. So, this is a community and, and conference for uh, web professionals, educators, and people who are uh, dedicated to taking WordPress in higher education. Accessibility. This is our. Uh, this is a point uh, of another contribution that we can do. So there are a lot of struggles of people uh, with disabilities when they use the web, and when we contribute to accessibility, it helps increase engagement and broaden audience. Ac what accessibility? What does it mean? Accessibility means putting people first. That everything begins with the user. So to get, get involved in uh, WordPress accessibility, you can go to this site, and you can see the, uh, the Slack channel, the schedule, and um, start getting involved. Some kinds of contributions about accessibility is a plugin created by Joe Dalton. Uh, it's called WP Accessibility. And what it does is it fixes common issues, accessibility issues, on your WordPress website. Another is transcription, something like we can see here on, on the top of the slide. So a few months ago, I was in London. And I had the pleasure to be with some of the amazing people out there. And uh, in this photo, you can see a lady who's doing a live speech-to-text transcription. Another example is interpretation. This photo was taken in Brisbane in 2015. So you can see here that the uh, speaker is next to a sign language interpreter. So accessibility is not only making the web accessible for people with disabilities, but it can also mean uh, being accessible to everybody by using accessible media and plain language. 
So for designers, for artistic people, those who are interested in design, uh, this one is for you. So people are always welcome in submitting their themes. And you can also help review the, the themes that are submitted. And you can also, of course, join the group. Where you can contribute, uh, it's here, about themes are underscores or underscore S, which is a WordPress starter theme. Uh, another is, if you're a designer and you wanted to see how your site will look like on different uh, size, sizes of devices, you can try this plugin, which is Customizer Theme Resizer. And what it does is it allows you to see your live site on uh, a different devices. And of course, this little little guy right here, uh, Wapu. So what started as a little yellow fella uh, became a craze. And now there are hundreds and hundreds of variations, like the one on top is Space Wapu. And then um, my per one of my favorites, uh, the Wapu from Berlin. Very cute. So who here can speak more than one language? Ooh, a lot. All right, so this one is for you. So let me tell you first a bit of a story when I was young, when I was growing up. When I was growing up, I didn't know much about my sister. I didn't know what her likes are, what her dislikes are, or do we even have the same interests? I don't know a thing about it. But then I started learning sign language, and I realized that I have a lot of similarities with her. I learned deeper about her, have a better understanding of her. So just like WordPress, when it's in the language that we understand, um, we understand it deeper. We learn about it deeper and better. So when WordPress, for example, was translated into Japanese, there was a the major increase in Japanese users and, and Japanese developers as well. So getting involved, you can, of course, also go to Tago. He's one of the, the, the people uh, at the Polyglot team. You can become a translator, and you can join our team. Of course, uh, more details on makewordpress.org polyglots. You can translate WordPress uh, plugins and themes. I don't know if you can see it at the back, but this is a uh, WordPress page in Tagalog, which is my language because I'm from the Philippines. So uh, other things you can translate are uh, WordPress strings, plugins, and, and themes, of course. Another one is interpretation. Um, this photo was taken last year in Osaka, Japan, where an English speaker, uh, my husband, uh, is being translated into Japanese. And finally, um, uh, an event that, was, that happened just recently, the WP Global Translation Day, last 24th of April, it is a, a wonderful day of globalizing and localizing WordPress. So in, in Japan, this is um, uh, what we did over there. Next up, our community. So WordCamps like this one highlights uh, on things about WordPress. And it is put together by WordPress users like us. And year after year, it gets bigger. So WordCamp starts from local meetups that develop the community. So for example, in Japan, we do have a local meetup called WordBench. WordBench is um, a meetup that can be in different uh, cities in Japan. I think probably now 50. Um, I'll give you some examples. Probably also you can have some ideas uh, what you can do in your community. First one is WordBash. This is a, a, a meetup in Kyoto. And uh, what we do there is we have WordPress sessions at the beginning, and then um, at the end, we have a party. The next one is a word fest, which is a fiesta, a festival. And finally, probably something very good for this summer is Word Beach, because uh, what we do is we have sessions, WordPress sessions next to the beach. So after that, we can have some party, have fun, go to the beach, play in the sand, uh, have barbecue and, and all things fun like that. So uh, contributing to the community, uh, you can start your own meetup or join one. After all, um, uh, WordPress meetups all over the world are over 1,000. So most likely, you will find a, a group in your city. So some communities start from the beginning, while other communities are already existing, but you have to, they have to be rebuilt. And finally, if you have an experience in uh, organizing meetups or WordCamps, 
And building communities, don't lock the knowledge to yourself, but instead you should pass the torch to the next community leaders. So um, we're now at the FAQs of contributing. So people ask, why do you contribute and what do you get out of it? Well, um, contributing to WordPress is a continuation of our education, and it helps you keep up to date with the latest trends. And um, after all, everything ha happens fast in tech, so we need to be flexible because we don't know what the skills are required for tomorrow. And it's, of course, a very uh, rewarding experience. Uh, for the qualities of a great contributor, um, of course, you need to have a great communication skill because uh, you're working with people who are uh, from different parts of the world, and it's important to get your message across. And like a cat, you stay curious, you wanted to um, discover something, learn something new, and of course, uh, a great contributor is uh, you work on things that you enjoy. Because when you stick to your, to your interests, to your strengths, you can make a project better. Some pe people ask, so, so what is it like to contribute to WordPress? Um, it definitely takes dedication to contribute to WordPress because we have lives outside contributing. So don't just make time to contribute, but make time to enjoy it. So the best way, the best time to start contributing is uh, on our contributor day on Sunday. And now we're down at the summary. So uh, contributing is an enriched learning experience and it's a continuation of our education and our growth. It prepares our skills and gets us ready for what tomorrow may bring because there is no such thing as a small contribution. All the other areas of contributions are just as significant. And Contributing comes in many shapes and forms. It's about giving back to the community, to the open source platform, making the web safer, more accessible, and setting a good example for the next generation. And this will keep our community growing, open, and global. So this is contributing to WordPress for business, profession, and the community. I'm Kel Santiago Pilarski, and let's all enjoy WordCamp Europe. Thank you.